Hey everybody, in this video we are going to paint a flower with very inexpensive watercolor paints. So I talk quite a bit about paper and how um, I absolutely do not recommend going lower than 140 pound watercolor paper when you are painting with watercolors or uh, water soluble media. And so what I mean by that is if you are planning on using crayons, uh, like Neocolor wax pastels, that you are going to turn into a watercolor effect, that's what I'm talking about by water-soluble media. Or um, watercolor markers, like the Tombow. So the watercolor markers like the Tombows here, uh, you want to use 140 pound paper. If you happen to see mixed media paper that is 140 pound, I don't even suggest that uh, because it just isn't set up for watercolor. It will say probably on it for wet or mix or dry media, and um, by that it just means it can take you know a little bit like of markers and stuff like that, um, and maybe a little bit of water, but not a watercolor type piece. And 90 pound watercolor paper, I just kind of am like, no, don't even bother. Um, there's many times when you are learning a technique in art that you can kind of, um, you can compromise on some of the higher quality stuff and, and learn with something more inexpensive. Like some acrylic paints you can do that with and, and get cheaper acrylic paints and experiment with them, save money until you really kind of know what you're doing and then, you know, work up to buying more expensive paints when you, you know, feel more confident. Um, but with this, um, if you don't use the right paper and if your paper isn't heavy enough, you just, you won't be able to learn because it's going to react different and you won't learn how it's really actually supposed to react with the water and the paint and your brush strokes and whatnot. So that is one thing um, with the paper. And you don't have to buy the most expensive watercolor paper because watercolor paper can be very expensive. For instance, I will tell you that the cheapest watercolor paper that you could use is very inexpensive. This is Artist Loft watercolor paper pad. It's 140 pounds. You get uh, three packs of these. There's 24 sheets in a pack. You get three packs for, I think, $20. That's Canadian. Um, you can't use a coupon on it, but that is a like the cheapest price for watercolor paper and this is good for learning on because you also don't want to feel like oh I spent a lot of money on this and I'm just learning and I don't even know if I'm gonna even like this so and it and it really inhibits you when you're trying to learn something when you have to be thinking about the cost that you're you put into this um, so it's nice if you can kind of get rid of that uh, worry about, okay, I paid a lot of money for this, I gotta make it good. This is perfectly good for experimenting on and very cheap, but there are some that just are not going to be acceptable. But this is one that I would say, go ahead and start with. Um, there is, even on this one, there is a side that's a little bit more rough, it has a little bit more texture, and then a side that's smooth. So this is cold press, and um, I, like this, I like the rougher side. Um, that's why I prefer cold press over hot press. And then, you know, you can work your way up into more uh, more quality paper. But um, that is a perfectly good one, and um, you don't have to feel like, you know, I think you can learn on that one. I've used it quite a bit. Especially, I use it when I make my travel watercolor journals because it's just, I'm just kind of fooling around and sketching and... Um, I don't use it for my, you know, paintings, um, but when I do my watercolor paintings, they are usually for um, photographing and sending into my licensing company. So as long as the paper does what it's supposed to do and it will work with the effect I want to have on there, then it's fine. Um, of course, every all of my art is for sale. Um, but if I was specifically wanting to display it and sell it, then I would probably use, I would use a higher quality paper. And there's lots of different, you can get sheets of paper and then cut them down. But, and you, you might have other options than I do. I don't have a lot of options where I live and I can order things in too, but I can't really get single sheets in. 
So that is uh, what I want to say about that. And brushes, um, you same kind of thing. You don't need to spend the most, like spend crazy amount of genuine hair brush, natural hair brush. Um, and a lot of times, especially now, they're they're more difficult to get. Um, and there's so many good synthetic brushes out there that um, are really good also. And I have some more expensive brushes and I have some cheaper brushes. You can get the cheaper watercolor brushes at uh, Michael's. This one is, I use as an acrylic brush. Royal and Langnickel is a perfectly good name of brush to get. Um, watercolor and especially if you use a coupon at Michael's then it's very affordable and um, I have some more expensive brushes. I have some Escada ones here and some silver black oval brushes, which I love. Like I, I really do love these, but I kind of worked my way up into it till I knew kind of what I wanted in a brush. And you don't really know that until you get going. So don't go buy a, a dollar store brush. Don't go buy a brush from Walmart. You know, at least go to a hobby store and get um, a decent watercolor brush that you know you can use a coupon on so you don't have to worry about spending too much money and so that's where we're at with that okay so now we're on to the paints so what i want to say about the paints is that my favorite paints are daniel smith and they are probably one of the most expensive paints watercolor paints um there's some other names like sennelier um oh um i'm trying to think of the other one i can't think of it right now um, there's definitely some more expensive paints out there, but Daniel Smith is really up there and he is really well known for his uh, variety of watercolor paints and they are amazing. They're, I just love them. Um, and I work with various paints, but I usually tend to work with Daniel Smith the most. Having said that, I have these. And this was basically my first kind of watercolor thing. And I just got these for a mixed media thing. I think these are $6.99 at Michael's. And I can't remember if I've seen them at other stores or not. I don't know if these are considered artist loft. Or if you can get them at other stores. I don't, I don't know. But these ones are from Michael's. So this one is like a pearlescent one. It's kind of useless actually. Because I find that there's hardly any pigment in there. They look really cool um, on here. But I can't really get any pigment so there's that um, and then there's these so this is just the same thing this is just some more colors and in, in a smaller pan we're gonna use these today and I'm gonna show you that even with these you can learn how to paint don't go get dollar store paints this is the bottom of the barrel here the bottom of the barrel is actually dollar store and at least the paints I've seen in my dollar stores here you might have some different ones where you live and go ahead definitely try them out um, I've never seen any that are worth a dollar. <laughs> They're not even worth a dollar. Um, they, I would buy them just to do a video and then that's all I would. These ones are the lowest acceptable paints to get. And oh, I, can't, I can't even open these. Okay, it's been a while apparently. So I'm gonna open these up. And I have to say that these are on, like I've taught with these in person and people were very impressed and I've had people that are like okay you know what this is because watercolor tubes can be expensive they last a long time but they can be quite expensive for the first initial cost especially if you want to get like some decent ones so I've had people that have learned from these and said you know I can I can do that I can kind of manage that whole thing because I don't feel like I'm wasting really expensive paint and I'm, I'm still learning which is the whole point in this video. Uh, I'm not, whatever, it's not even, the point is not even to teach you how to draw a flower or paint a flower. It is to show you that you can start with paints like this. Um, I always have to give a lot of disclaimers in my videos because so many people will comment and say, why would you use those? Why not buy some good quality watercolors? Okay, I have good quality water, watercolors, but not everybody's gonna do that. And they might eventually get to that, but some people just like, you know what, I just wanna do watercolors every once in a while or just in a mixed media way. These are perfectly fine for mixed media type watercolors that you just want to add on your little art journals and whatever. These are fine. You really don't need anything else. I mean, unless you're me and you need all the things. 
So you may need something that you can kind of use as a palette. You can use, you can definitely, and you can see here that I've got that going on right here. Actually, I'm going to put this on this side. You know, I can use some space up here. So what I'm going to start with is just, we're just going to paint, I don't even know what I'm painting here. I'm going to start with a green. Now when I see these, I don't see, as you know, I like my earthy greens. My favorite green is Green Appetite Genuine by Daniel Smith. And I don't see a really nice earthy green here. I see this kind of emerald green, but it's not going to be exactly what I want. But guess what? We can mix it right over here. See, there's some good pigment in there. Is it the highest quality? No, it's not. Is that okay? Yes, it is. For our purposes in this video right here, it is okay. It's not okay for everything, but it is okay for this specific video. All right. So this is, well, we'll see if this is acceptable or not this green. I will have to change it. So I'm just going to kind of do a few little leaves. I'm going to kind of do a arrangement here. And, um, I am getting together a watercolor course on specifically how to, how I paint and, and, you know, whatever. I'm trying to get that up and there's going to be a lot of um, information in there. Um, but there is more information as well on my YouTube channel so you can check out my other videos in here um, in this playlist. Um, did I mention the giveaway I have right now? There is a giveaway for those of you who don't know, and for those of you who do know, are like, ugh, this again. Um, because you already know the drill and you already know what to do. But, um, I have giveaways all the time. Right now, it's watercolor month. And so I'm, um, well, it's watercolor month on my channel, not in the world. <laughs> Uh, so I have a giveaway going and check out that link just up there. I'm going to put it right there for you to um, have a look-see and find out how you can enter. Uh, but I will tell you that you need to watch all the videos in the playlist. You need to give a thumbs up or thumbs down on every video and you need to be subscribed to me. So check that out. Um, I should probably connect these leaves to the stem at some point. Right now I'm just kind of, okay, and as you know, or you may not know, I really like loose kind of watercolor, so I kind of put my paint in, and then I just kind of move it around so it looks like it's kind of whew, fading off into the, into the distance there. I just love that. It kind of gives it a soft, ethereal look, and I love it. So some of these may not work as well as um, these paints. You might have to get to some sooner. Um, there's more about staining and non-staining paints, um, which basically just means paints that move easier than others. So some paints you can let almost completely dry and, you know, actually completely dry, and then you can still go in later and move them around. And some paints, you need to get to them immediately if you want to move them. And by moving, I just mean what I'm doing right here. Just moving that around. All right. So I've got something in there. I might need to move this out of the way so that you guys can see. And um, I don't, when I'm doing these flower paintings, I don't usually have my paper taped down to anything. I don't have it stretched. I like to be able to move it and whatever. When I'm doing my portraits, or even maybe a landscape, I tape it down, I stretch it, pre-stretch it, all that good stuff. Um, but for these ones, I don't. And that's just my personal preference, and that's the way I do it. I'm going to add some yellow in there just to brighten things up. So these are $6.99. $6.99 for these paints and probably cheaper where you are because everything's more expensive where I live. And um, now 
what color of flower do I want to add? I think I'm going to do kind of like an orangey yellowy. Let's just see here. And I might try my little flat brush. So right now I was using my Escoto brushes. Um, Mimic brushes are also very nice to use. You can find them on um, Amazon. I think that's where I got mine. I got a big set for about $100. And that is actually a very good price for good brushes. And they are good brushes. So that's Mimic, M-I-M-I-K. Um, if you're in the States, you probably have some better options. Like Jerry's Artorama or Dick's Blick. I can't order from any of those places because uh, they don't ship to Canada or they cost more than the actual product for shipping to Canada. So, yeah. If anyone ever wants to, uh, you know, get some kind of an order for me, <laughs> and then send it to me because it's actually cheaper for me to like get it sent to some place in the States. And then um, the States. Do you guys call it the States down in the States? Um, we call it the States. I don't know if you guys do. You that actually live in the States. Um, and I know not all my viewers live in the States. A lot of you are from the UK, all over the world. Um, anyways, we call it the States. Um, we don't really, say, well, no, I guess we do say the US, but most times we say the States. Um, what was I saying? I was saying, oh yes, it's cheaper for me to order something, pay shipping to get it shipped to somewhere in the States, and then pay shipping again to have that person send it to me up here, than it is to pay shipping from like a website or a, a store online in the States. My mom and dad, um, when my mom was alive, they would always go to the States for winter, and so I would get my mom to get parcels for me. And um, they would send them to me, or they would bring them back when they would come back at summertime and whatever. And uh, it was really handy having that. But my mom died, and um, I guess I could do it. My dad got remarried, and... Um, I think she probably would do it for me, but I don't know. They don't live up in where I am now anymore, so they don't really come up here, so I don't know how I would even get it. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of flowers I'm doing, and that doesn't matter. That's not too important. So I've got a couple different colors here. I'm using this kind of orange one, this mostly orange one here. This is a little bit more scarlet, but then I see there's this lighter orange here. I'm going to try that. So I want a couple different shades. I don't want the same kind of orange. That's boring. So whenever you're painting acrylic, watercolor, whatever, you want to do a couple different shades of things. You don't want to do um, all the same flowers. So now it might be nice to do a little bit of this like gold in here just to get some kind of other flowers in there. I'm trying to not do roses. My my go-to is just like a rose and I'm trying to not do a rose <laughs> because I just like painting roses. Let's put a little bit of red in this one. Yeah we need some different, let's, let's make one a little bit more red. This, in some ways I feel like I'm painting a poppy here which I don't mean to be doing but if it ends up looking like that, well, who am I to argue? Who am I to argue? So there's some cool p colors in here. Like this is a flesh tone color, which is nice. Um, and you could always kind of make a flesh tone color. There is a white. Oh, I've got used that white a lot. Um, I think we're just going to stick with those um, three flowers there. And I'm going to take a brush and maybe use a little bit of this kind of, um, I don't know if it's burnt sienna. It's 
like a rust color here a little bit. Let's put a little bit of center in there maybe. Ooh, I like that color. Let that just kind of move. Add some water to it. And I need to just add a different shape. So this, this brush here is a Winsor Newton Cotman angled brush. I don't remember how much it was, but I remember thinking, oh yeah, I could buy that with a coupon and that's not too much at all. Um, okay, I'm really making this flower look like a poppy. Whatever, it's okay. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to just move that around a little bit and I'm actually going to move that around because it's too, too much, too much. And then I'm going to do some dry brushing here. If I can find the right brush that I want. So these brushes are kind of, they were a little bit hard for, and I got, I got a brush like this. It's like a bamboo brush. It's called bamboo or Chinese brush. Um, at first I was like, oh, well, this is useless. I'm never going to use this. But they are awesome for this dry brushing effect that um, I love doing. So I can just get the right kind of color here. This one has a lot of good browns in it that can mix with some greens and give me some interesting greens here. There's something rattling on my table. <laughs> and then if you just have, if you just um, have just a little bit of pigment and not too much water, you can get this kind of scraping across. And that's why I like the texture. This one is actually a smooth side um, of the paper. So it's a little bit harder to do this with. But I like some of this transparency so that you can kind of see through to the other side because it um, helps us to see layers and depth and feels like we're, you know, looking through something, which is always very important um, when you are painting any kind of scene, unless it's, you know, um, kind of like an abstract theme. I'm just going to do a few little wisps here just to add these and so we've got leaves here we know they're leaves they're not there's not really a leaf shape we could go in and maybe maybe kind of work in a little bit of a leaf shape here but I always find that it gets way too overdone too quickly like and all of a sudden it's like oh I, I, I did too much I didn't stop in time and so there's always kind of the danger of that like I always prefer my my paintings to look more loose than to be so detailed that it's just there's just too much so I mean I could you know kind of work in a little leaf here with some negative painting right there and then I just soften this line out there we go and there we've got kind of a leaf coming out there and you just need a few of those and you're good like maybe I should do a little bit on this side just to show that tip there there we go that's all you need and then I can even just go into this. So this is a Mimic brush. Sorry, I'm not saying what I'm using here. This is a Mimic brush. It's a liner brush, or it's also called a rigger brush, or it's also called a script brush. Um, basically, it's very long, and there's different sizes. And you, these are really good for stems, um, grass, all that kind of thing. So this looks a little bit weird. So all I'm going to do is just... Kind of, there we go. Okay, and this, I uh, love that. There, okay. So this flower, I really like what that one's doing. This one is not doing well. I might need something a little darker. There we go. 
And then I think I just kind of want to bring out this shape a little bit here. Just kind of put a little bit of shape into this flower. So I'm going to kind of, I'm not sure if this is going to work here. And then, um, you know what, I just need to do some leaves and I'm going to show you guys a trick for some leaves. And you can use an angled brush, but I'm going to show you how to do it with just a normal straight brush if I can find one. I don't have one at the ready. Here's one. So this is a Royal and Langnickel 12. Might be a little too big, but we're going to use it anyway. Um, and I'm going to go with this green here and I'm going to try to earthy it up a little bit. Why is it that I can never get earthy greens? Like when I buy a watercolor palette, it doesn't have earthy greens. It has lime greens, emerald greens, but no earthy greens. It drives me nuts. Why doesn't anyone have earthy greens? I mean, John Smith has earthy greens that are amazing, but I'm saying like in a palette. So all you're going to do is you're just going to go like this and start like that. You're going to start flat and you're going to end up the other way. So before I get to going on this, this looks too out of place so I need to soften it, right? Otherwise it looks weird. I just want that leaf to kind of just, Ooh, yes, I love it, yes, yes, yes. Let's do one falling, falling, falling. So that takes a little bit of a little bit of practice, but let me just show you here. So if you're going to start like this, you're going to end up like this. So if you start vertical, you're going to end up horizontal. If you start horizontal, you're going to end up vertical. You can do it whatever way you want. So, and you just twist and lift off at the same time. So don't twist and then stay there. That's not going to do anything. You've got to lift off. Lift off. And then you can do it this way. And lift off. And lift off. There you go. Those are your leaves. Practice it. And you will get it. At first you're going to be like, what? But once you get it, you're good. So that is how to do just like a easy, quick little leaf. I learned that from... Where, did I, where do I remember seeing that years ago? Somewhere, somewhere, Jerry, 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 um, Yarnell, Jerry Yarnell, there you go. Thank you, Jerry. I am a self-taught artist, for those of you who don't know, which means I taught myself by finding different things to watch. <laughs> so now I've got some dry stuff here, so I'm doing kind of that effect, because I really like these, like, skipping over the... the paper. So when you want to do that effect, you want to have more pigment than water. So it just kind of Yes. I still don't love this flower, but I think I might have to leave it because I don't see a solution. Normally, I would just like, you know, come back the next day and just kind of um, all of a sudden it'd be like, oh, this is what I gotta do in 30 seconds it would be done. But um, I'm doing a video and I don't feel like doing that right now. Just put a little bit. Now these really look like some kind of poison. Anyways, there you go. That is my painting for um, using the cheapest watercolor paints. I don't even know if there's any cheaper watercolor paints. And if there is, don't get them. <laughs> Because they can't be any good. Um, unless they're amazing sale. You know, if you got some good paints on sale, then you're good. Um, but these are perfectly good to start with. And you can learn with these paints. 
If you want some more instructional videos on flowers, definitely watch the rest of my YouTube. I have a lot of flowers on my YouTube channel, but I also have a course um, that I'm putting up and it's going to be up on my website and you can check that out. I will definitely have the link below and um, yeah. So it's not up right now. I haven't even settled on a price, but I will tell you that the price will be between 20 and forty dollars. That's all I know. I haven't decided what it is because I haven't even finished filming the course. I've film, filmed most of it, but I need to upload it and make sure I've got all the details before I finalize the price. But it will be between twenty and forty dollars, just so that you can, you know, know what's going on. And there you go. I wish I knew what flowers to call these. Um, but you guys can comment and tell me what kind of flowers I just painted, and then I will know. <laughs> all right. Um, the next video I'm going to film is how to paint with watercolor soluble crayons. And these are Reeves and also very affordable, like $12. So watch out for that video. I'm going to be filming that next and uploading it next. See you later.